What's up, guys? Your boy Tobias1017 back at it again. Today, I bring you my X1 Altergeist deck. We um, we went to Eternal Games yesterday for locals, and we managed to get X1 round one. It was four rounds. Round one, played against Tribrigade. We lost the game three. He gambled the Lancia on standby phase. There's nothing we could do about that. Um, round two, we played against Grin Maju, took a game three. Dark Ruin no more does nothing when you have protocol out. Uh, round four played against Pier Zoo. Uh, we managed to take it. Game three again. <laughs> and last but not least, round four we battled against Fish. Took a game three thanks to Godarla and Manifestation's Grave Effect. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Um, Make sure you guys hit that like, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, turn on all notifications. Let me know what you want to see moving forward. Try to get more deck profiles up. It's been pretty busy for me, you know. Life takes over priority and stuff. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, to start off, uh, your standard three Marinetter, three Multi Faker, three Melee Seek. Uh, three Melisi, two Silquitis, and the one Concurry. Uh, pretty standard package. You know, you never want to see. Um, you don't play more than these, as far as the Silk and the uh, Concurry go, because you don't really want to open Silk. Concurry is fine to open up with, as long as you at least have like a Marionette or a Protocol or spoofing in hand. Like I said, it's pretty standard build. Uh, moving on to hand traps, we play three ash, two ghost bell. Um, I cut ghost bell down to two. I felt like it was clunky. I see enough of it at two. Not to mention, you do a lot of like searching, so it's fine just to keep this at two. It, I find myself like citing this out a lot, even in the tribal game matchup at times because. I find that other cards come in handy a lot more. Like I prioritize the Lancia than I do the Bell. And then for our other honorary hand trap, triple imperm. Imperm faker is just nuts it's on your opponent's turn. Um we also have three Gadarla. Um this deck has a really hard time against like Untargetable monsters. We can't really make big monsters on the field, so Gadarla deals with those problems. And, you know, it takes out the Borlo Savage or the Bane, the Dragoon, the Herald of Ultimateness. And also, I play Gadarla because I feel like I'm still weary of the Barrier Statue, and I feel like Gadarla is just like well-rounded. Plus, you can just Gadarla summon Melia Seat. And link Melia Seek away into Relinquish Anima and just steal the Gadarla in the zone. Uh, on to spells. We only play three spells. Uh, Pot of Prosperity. Um, I did play Extravagance. Extravagance is good. It's still a but it's a budget option if you cannot afford Prosperity. But the being able to choose what you banish as well as what you add to hand has so much more like power to it because then you can dig for the cards you need in order to like make sure you maintain establish control like if you know your opponent probably has a duster in hand which is like nine times out of ten they usually open up with that one of against you you can use this like going first to dig for your solemn judgment or even going second you can dig for your solemn judgment the only like thing you have to really worry about is like quick play spells like twin twisters or cosmics if they already have them on field but like i said um also if you're going to play extravagance the extra deck would have to be built slightly different uh moving on standard trap lineup three spoofing the honorary alter card Two protocol and one manifestation. Um, believe it or not, game three against Fish, I got hit with red reboot on the manifestation, and then he Exiton knight me. And then, like, when he popped my field, 
because Red Reboot only stops the activation of traps, but not their effects. Like if they have linear effects in Graveyard, or like say Elblitz to banish, I can just banish the I banish the manifestation out of the protocol, and we're able to bait out the Toad and proceed to go off. And we actually took the game because of that. The manifestation definitely came in handy. But like I said, this is just standard like ratios. Um, three judgment and three strike. Strike is really good going first or second. Always has been. Um, judgment, if I'm not going first, I'll side these out for, depending on the matchup, uh, it's likely I'll decide these out for like one panker tops and um, maybe two evenly or two anti spell or like secret village or something. And then for the blow up blowout cards, um, Imperial Order. Don't know why this card is unbanned, but since it's not, we're just gonna like play it. Still, so many games and Skill Drain. Skill Drain is a really nice flex spot. Turns off Dragoon. Turns off a lot of like mon it turns off your monsters, uh it turns off everything on the field. But when you have this in protocol out, like this plus protocol means your monsters effects are negated, but when they activate, they resolve. And that's pretty good because you can bounce back the dragoon. You can like I said, you can deal with untouchable monsters, you can deal with a lot of problems that you could normally deal with. You turn off your opponent's combo plays everything it's super good uh that's it for the main deck 40 card main obviously uh on to extra deck for link ones relinquish anima link karibo and artemis uh this is pretty standard link karibo is like normally the go-to with the melia seed because you just make link karibo then you add the um multi-faker and then you probably have a trap or two, so you set those, and you just, like, from there on, you have, like, extra protection. Uh, Anima, I normally banish these two if I'm going first. If I'm going second and I open a kaiju, and my opponent puts up, like, a pretty oppressive board, like, they'd make Toad, and we just, like, kaiju the Toad. We'd make the Anima off the Melia Seek, and then we just steal the kaiju and just, like, swing for 27. But, like I said, these are, these are just standard. Um... If you are playing Extravagance, you want to play multiples of both of these. I'd say three of these, two of these, or vice versa. Most like, most definitely three. I'd probably say three and three of both, though. That way you have an equal chance of getting a one-off summon. Uh, then we play the Charmers, Hida and Lina. Hida's basically... It's basically we use it to climb into access code if we want to like push for game. Uh, same with Lina to still pretty much it, it's good against Drytrons. Um, like I said, same thing. Like you can steal the Veiler, and it's basically just to like make access code to push for game. It's just like it gives us that extra power we need because we don't really have a lot of strong monsters. We just like chip away at life points. Um, three Hextia and one Prime Banshee. I hardly ever make this. I usually banish the Prime Banshee almost every time off Prosperity. Like my Prosperity targets. Uh, get away from me. Uh, my Prosperity targets are usually uh, going. If I'm going first, I'll banish these two. Um, likely a Lina, Prime Banshee, this, and a uh, Ningirsu. But I it never comes up. Uh, I usually banish Hextia like every once in a while. I'll apparently probably banish two Hextia. You there are occasions where you don't really go into the extra deck like that, and Hextia only comes up against certain matchups, predominantly against Strikers when I like summon the Hextia. But outside of that, you find yourself banishing a lot just to like excavate. And then we play the Nightmare Package, uh, Unicorn and Phoenix. Uh, these are also uh, uh, potential prosperity targets for banishing, but I like having these for like spot removal, which it doesn't come up much, but it 
it has come up and that's why it's good. It's like, there's just good to have. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Then for Link 3, Selene and Ningirsu. Ningirsu is just another way to out the Dragoon. Uh, Selene is just the push for access code, which is also how we out Dragoon. And then for your Link 4 is uh, access code talker and Avramax. Just more Dragoon outs, essentially. <laughs> uh, moving on to the side deck. We play Triple Antia. For those tribal game matchups, it also comes up against stuff like Grand Maju as well. And like some some of the road like road decks um, against Invoke Dogmatica and even like Eldritch, it comes up too. It, it stops the invocation. And this if you feather duster Eldritch, you can just like drop Lancey like if they try to like recur and stuff like next turn, you just drop the Lancia. Like if you force out their stuff, you know, drop the Lancia afterwards. If they have stuff engraved. But it's and it's not a once it's also gonna be good against cross out designator moving forward because they have to declare the card name first and then there's a semicolon in which you banish. But like I said, Lancia, really good. Uh Pankertops, definitely for going second. Just a big body, spot removal, forces out, negates, you know. Pankertops hasn't really hasn't really fallen out of the format at all. Like you don't see it much, but it do, it is relevant still. Um then we have two cosmic, one duster. Just more spot removal. So like when you're forced to go second, you know, get rid of those pet like Eld this, this gets rid of Eldritch cards. Like these two banishes the Eldritch cards, and then you obviously Duster just to clear back row because you want to be able to like resolve your effects, and it's already bad enough you have to deal with um, like hand traps, like and like Ash, like they Ash the Melee Seek. It's kind of like a little difficult if you don't really have if you're banking on the Melee Seek, and on top of that, like you have to deal with back row and stuff, force out certain negates too. So these definitely come in handy. And then we have the old Reliables, two Secret Village, one Metaverse, and two Anti Spell. Um, this came up against Fish. They use spells to for their extensions. So this turns off the Ready Fusion, the Instant Fusion, Desires, uh, Monster Reborn. It turns it turns that stuff off, so they can't uh, extend further if you stop their plays. And it definitely stole me game two for sure. Uh, last but not least, evenly matched. Um, this card's going to be really good moving into a format post-Burst of Destiny. Stuff like Flunderies and Sword Soul. Uh, and on top of that, the Drytron matchup, Tri-Brigade matchup. And even in the Mirror match, this is, like, super good. So, like, evenly just crack. Uh, but that is it for the deck profile. Um, before we go, shout out to the, uh, the team, Angel Gaming, my boy Ed, Jerry, Sal, Andy, Ivan, Ben... Kyle, Mitch, Brandon, whole whole squad, bro. We, we be out here doing it, man. We're just getting tops and stuff. And hopefully when uh, regionals comes back for IRL events, man, y'all going to hear and see more of us. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, make sure you like and subscribe. I very much appreciate it. At the time of recording this, we're at 91 subs. Nine more subs, we get to 100, and then we get a giveaway. Two winners, so... Looking forward to that. You know, big goals. Got a lot of plans for the channel. And um, this is Tobias1017 saying peace out, be blessed, and uh, stay out of trouble.